matters forever, part three. What matters forever, part three. You know, many things that occupy our mind right now may not be as better or as going to last forever or as going to be having some eternal values. Over 90% of what occupies our mind right now, uh, these are things that uh, may not have eternal value. A natural man tends to occupy himself or herself with things that are temporary. The properties that we pursue today, things that we acquire today, things that we pile up today, eventually may end up in dump site. Some of them may be forgotten after we will have been gone. Some of those things may not be even useful for the new generations. There are some things my father used that I cannot use now. If I use those things now, even dogs will back at me. I think you know that. At a point in time, our great, great, great grandchildren may not even remember us. How many of you are keeping the pictures of your great, great grandparents in your house now? How many of you? Those pictures might have been replaced by the new ones. Many of these pictures will be discarded. About three years ago, a lady called me. Um, she called from somewhere in the northwest of Chicago. And she started the story by saying that she heard that uh, I am the pastor of this church and that um, a great grandfather, something great great grandfather, had been the rabbi of this synagogue, now church. He asked me if I have things, memory, things that I found when we bought this place that I can share with them. She said she got uh, a sister in California, and she mentioned her name, prominent person, and she said they were discussing about this that if I can have something that I can share with them. And honestly speaking, when we bought this place in 2004, the people that sold this place to us, the Jews that sold this place, they left some pictures. Some pictures, good pictures. Do you know, I can share this with you. It's not something I can bring out right here. Do you know that the picture, when this place was, uh, when they did the groundbreaking of this place, I got it. Got that picture. And the rabbi that was here then, I got this picture. They wrote his name on that picture. I don't want to mention his name because the family may not like that. But what I'm saying is that when they sold this place, they left those valuable things there. Those are pictures. They glazed those pictures. I mean, some of them were in a, like a wood kind of I will show you, I took them from the church here, I took them home, kept it somewhere, so that in the future, I may use that to talk to some of us. I'm keeping those pictures in a very safe place. I told the lady, I can share these pictures with you, I cannot give this picture to you. Because when you, when you, when you purchase a property, if you miss something good there, it's for you. If you miss something bad there, it's for you. If it has been something bad, you won't call me. I want to share with me. If I meet liability here, it's for all of us to share. If we meet anything valuable, it's for what? All of us to share. But those are remarkable pictures. I may, I don't know, maybe eventually give those things to them, but I'm still keeping them, and I'm thinking about how we think. They left those valuable things. Those people, those rabbi or whatever that you know, build this place, wouldn't, wouldn't ever in their imagination that people will just walk away from here and they will sell it. Some of the buildings that you are building today may eventually be occupied by strangers. 
It is not a cause. I'm telling you a true life story. What matters forever has to do with your love for God. Things that you do for God. Don't stack things here. After you have been gone, you never have control over those things. Even while you are still alive right now, you do not have 100% control over those things. My grandfather, I can remember, I never met him, but I can remember some little story about him. He told me, he built a house. I, I have been to that house, but I cannot remember the last time I've been to that house. The long, if I my children, they, never, they have never seen that house. My, my grandmother, uh, too, my grandmother, the paternal side, be the house. My grandfather, the maternal side, be the house. And uh, I need, my children, they have not seen those things. Uh, even the house that I built, the house that I built, none of them, none of these children, I'm sorry saying this here, I didn't discuss with you, none of them ever called me and said, Daddy, house we were living before we came here. We want to go and see the place. None of these my children ever asked me that. They never asked me. One time I was thinking because my mom was buried in the house that I built in Lagos. I was thinking one time that who, if I pass they may say this house and they will say this, the body of this woman here. I pick, I call my junior brother. I told him, look, we're going to move mama from here. Where is the safe place that you know that no one will ever sell? He told me. I said, okay, make arrangement, move, you know, move the body, and go and bury that in there. Because even if I didn't sell that house and I passed, these children will not go there. I'm just telling you, true life story, focus on things that matter. What matters forever is your love for God, what you have done for the Lord while you are in this body. Christians will understand this. Somebody who has not given his or her life to Christ will never understand this. In fact, they will look at me as stupid, say, how Kero Kodele, look at this pastor, causing all that we're not going to take all that property back home. Mm, okay? But the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. It's your mindset. Where you call home is home. But our home is not here. We are sojourner in this place. This is transit. Our home is in heaven. You have given your life to Christ, you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes! Your eternity is guaranteed. And then you can understand what we are talking about. What matters forever? Your love for the Lord. Your love for God. That is what matters. And I tell you, if you have given your life to Christ, you will not find it hard to understand this. You will not find it difficult to understand this. Even if you don't understand what I'm saying now, look at around us. Look around us. How many of you have sat down with your children and you are telling your children history of your great-great-grandfathers? Either maternal or paternal side. How many of us have done that? And the same thing, because they are busy, after some years, they may not sit down and tell them about your story. If Jesus studies, if Jesus studies, 50 years to this time, 90 years to this time, 100 years to this time, we will have all been gone. If Jesus studies, but the memory you will leave behind, or things that you will have done that people will remember, or what you have done for the Lord, those are the things that will last forever, for eternity. There was a monk uh, then in, uh, in Europe, Maybe you have heard of his name, Martin Luther. Maybe you have heard of Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King Jr. or not. That. We're talking of the monk, Martin Luther, who the reformer, who started the movement of a kind of Protestant movement in Europe, in the Catholic Church. Um, that man looked at, um, he looked at the activities going on in that great church. 
and he desire to start a movement that will move people to understand that what matters most, what is important, is our salvation. The guarantee of your eternity, that's what matters most. That if you close your eyes here, you will have eternal rest with Christ. That is what is important. Nothing else, brothers and sisters, nothing else is as important as that. Nothing else is important as that. For it's very hard for a natural man to understand this. Our race in this life is to satisfy ourselves. Our you know, effort in this life is to make impact for people to see things that people can see and things that people see are temporal. Things that we do not see, they are eternal. Nobody is working hard and say, I want to do this, I want to do this for the Lord, I want to do this for the Lord so they can remember me, so that I can reach out to somebody, so that I can guarantee somebody's life, so that I can make sure somebody will spend eternity with Christ. I was talking to my wife. I said, we are praying. I said, I don't want to make it to heaven and I don't see my children there. I want to try my best. What is going to take that? I want to, I'm praying for them. I'm praying that God the Almighty will let them understand the gospel. Because one thing is to come to church. Another thing is to understand what is going on in the church. Some people just walk into church. They don't understand what is going on in the church. Some come to the church to transact business. Some come to the church to socialize. Some come to the church to make connections. Some come to the church just to see friends or something like that. Well, how many people really have the desire that this is a preparation for things for eternity? How many people? So Martin Luther came up and he opposed that organization, the Catholic organization. And he said that salvation is not by works. Because people think that it is what you are doing in this flesh, what you can acquire, what you can do, this and that, the work, this and that, will guarantee you eternity. The man, the, that monk said, no, that salvation is not all these things that we, we focus on. Salvation is not, you know, you know, the activities, it's not this religious something we focus on. And he came with what they titled, what they call uh, five solas. Five solas. And I want you to write these things down. And that is it. That is the bottom line. What matters forever? If you are in the church today, you are in this place, and you are listening to me, what matters forever is what you should focus your attention on. Don't focus your attention on all the politics, all the, he said, she said, this thing going on. Don't focus on this. Many are called. Few will be chosen. Jesus said, not all that call unto me, Lord, 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 we enter the kingdom of God. Only those who do the will of my Father in heaven desire to be the doer of the word, desire to live your life, to glorify God. Don't live your life to impress anybody. In my office, they just employed somebody as an assistant commissioner, and we met in a corridor, and I was talking to him. I said, because we were just talking, and I said, see, I said, right now, that at this point in my life, in this office, I'm not here to impress anybody. I'm here to do my work, and at the end, I want to retire. I told him. You know, sometimes when you just got to a job, you want to impress everybody. You work hard, you work hard, you work hard, you work, they, they call it this language, you work your tail out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. To so impress somebody. Do you know you get to a stage in your profession, in your life, you don't want to impress anybody. You want to satisfy God. You want to just you know, guarantee that your conscience is clear, that what we are, what we are doing is right. I think at a point in time in our lives when we come to fellowship in the church, we should get to see whereby you don't want to impress anybody. You want to focus on God. If you are seeing impressing this, doing this, to do this, and then you, you have not got it. So Martin Luther, because you know the activities of that organization so much, they are so powerful. Up to today, that organization is still very powerful. And he was talking of the fact that you cannot continue to exalt one man and think that this man you are exalting will guarantee you anything. He's a man like you. He can fall like you. He can make mistakes like you. And then he came in with these five solas. Put it down. He said, salvation is by grace alone. 
Salvation is true faith alone. Salvation is in Christ alone. Salvation is as revealed by the scripture alone. And he said, it is to the glory of God alone. And that one is very important. Anything you do where after you have given your life to Christ should be to the glory of God alone. In fact, our life should be such that we live our life to the glory of God alone. Because that you will return back to him. He created you. There's no argument about that. That was why he said you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with everything that you have. And the second is like the first. You do what? You love your neighbor like yourself. But if you don't first lay that foundation of loving God alone, loving God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with everything you have, you cannot love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's not possible. And then he, the, he back up these things with the scriptures. And in this, these five solas can be summarized to be Protestant reformation. Reformation. And that is why today all the pro Protestant churches can link their existence to this monk, Martin Luther. We talk of Anglican, we talk of Methodist, we talk of Lutheran, we talk of Baptist. You can link the foundation or you can link, link their history to what Martin Luther put down here. If time will permit us, let's look at this one by one. And you must understand this, all of us, because Christian activities or Christian foundation, our understanding of the, of the gospel is based on these five solas. We must all understand this so that you, you know as much as possible, you do the best for the Lord and leave the rest to him. You live your life to glorify him. I have a few more minutes to go. Let me see if I can just quickly run through this. And then maybe in part four, we can go further on it. Salvation is by grace alone. Do you all believe that? It's very, very simple. You must understand this. As you walk into this church, the one who can guarantee you that you are saved is God. And he's saying, it's by grace alone. It's not by work. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 12, as it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have Turned aside together, they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. So none of us can save ourselves because we are worthless. Without God, you are what? You are worthless. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. I'm reading English Standard Version. What is on the screen is New King James Version, and it's so close. So, all of us, nobody, we are all sinners, saved by grace. I can't save you, you can't save me. So, Martin Luther, you know, was saying that because some people believe that, you know, the head of that organization can save them. You know, he can, you know, he can bless them. But we are all worthless without God. It's Christ that is in us, that is making the difference in our lives. Amen? I don't trust you. I only trust Christ in your life. Any person in a dark place, in a very dark place, can become a monster. I only trust Christ in you. And if you're not a Christian, if you're not a Christian, you are very dangerous. You're a dangerous person if you're not a Christian. Because Satan can lay hands on you and cause to do the worst evil anybody can ever in this life can ever do. He said salvation is by faith alone. The first one I said by grace alone, right? The second one by faith alone. This is a theology. This is taught in Bible college. So today you are a student of theology. Amen. Put it down in your note and remember, reverse it all the time. By faith alone. Christian can talk of or discuss what we are talking about now, what matters forever. 
because of our salvation in Christ alone. In Christ alone. And we have to understand these things. Romans chapter 4 from verse 4 to 5 says, Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift but as his due. And to the one who does not work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. It's by faith alone. By faith alone. Romans chapter 5, 8 to 9. For God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Only through God, I mean, only through Christ you can see God, not through any other means. Christ is the only way. It, 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 it's been proven. And that's what Martin was saying. Everything must be based on the scriptures. Salvation is by grace alone, is by faith alone, and the third one is by Christ alone. Salvation is by Christ alone. These things he wrote down were written in Latin, but now we are seeing, seeing it in English. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Romans 10, 9, because if you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. That's all you need to do to be saved. You don't need to do any extra work. You don't need to give somebody this. And then the church that time, they will be telling you, those who are dead, that are not born again, you can walk. That if your parents, if they are dead, you can walk their salvation by giving some things to, to the church or something like that. Put some money down so you can redeem that person. It is not true. There's no salvation in the grave. If you are not a Christian, be one today. Amen. Just follow what we are discussing. Believe that Christ is the Lord. You will be saved. Uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Acts 4 chapter 5, 12. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. It says, and there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. No other name. Do not be deceived. Only through the name of Christ you can be saved. And it said the fourth one, scripture alone, is by scripture alone. If somebody is telling you anything outside the scripture, don't believe it. Even if I stand here and I'm preaching and I'm quoting something outside the Bible, listen, if those things are not, can't shake hands with the scriptures, do not believe it because the Bible is true. There is no error in the Bible. It's the word of God. It's inspiration. It's the breath of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by what? By him. And there was nothing, there is nothing else that, that has been made without the word. And that word is Jesus Christ. Jesus is true. Jesus is faithful. Jesus is life. There is no lie. There is nothing. The Bible is true. Amen. So anything outside the Bible, do not believe it. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This Bible is an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And it is true. Anything outside this is garbage. If you don't believe that, you think you can edit the Bible, it's the best, you know, best seller or whatever they call it of all time on the shelf. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. All scriptures is breathed, is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching. Say teaching. For the proof, for correction, say it with me, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. If you see anyone who says, I'm a man of God, and he cannot study the scripture, cannot study. To study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You cannot study the scriptures. You cannot read, the, not just read, study the scripture. I doubt it if you can do this job. And the last one, because I'm looking at my time. To the glory of God alone. 
And this one is very important. Even after you are born again, you are saved. Anything you do must be to the glory of God alone. There's a place for the world of what we, what we are doing in this flesh or what we have done in the flesh. There's a place. But that is not salvation. You just have to be saved first before you begin to see the dividend of your salvation. Begin to see the work you have done. But these days, so many places today, people are just focusing on the dividends, not on the main thing, the foundation, salvation. So they walk into the church, they just want the miracle. They want this, they want all those dividends. But the issue of salvation, they don't even understand. There are some people, they say they are prophet, they are pastor, they are this, they are bishop, they, are, they just know one verse of the Bible. And they use that verse to converse people, to confuse people. And do you know what? People are following them. If you don't study the scriptures, you will know that ignorance is very expensive. It's very what? Very expensive. And you may pay dearly for this. So study the scriptures so that anywhere you go, you may not be here forever. Nobody's going to be kicking you like ping pong. Kicking you. Robbing you. Some they've taken their wives. Some they've taken their children. Some they've taken their property. I was joking with a sister. She bought a car. We were blessing the car. And I said, where's the key? The Lord has to do with this. She <laughs> She started laughing. And then we are discussing. She said, she said, she said Pastor, do you know that they do that? They, 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 they take over some people's homes, properties, and say God has to do. They take over, they say they are doing it. I don't want to mention the country where they are doing it. Shine your face. Hello? The social media, the social media and all these things are bringing some things out. There's a place, there's, a, there's one that went viral when these people are fighting this man of God because he took over their house. No, seriously, took over their house. Okay, car, okay, car, you can buy another one. You, your, the, car, the man of God lay hands on your key and say, God has to do with this. You could, but a whole house. A whole house. Shine your face. To the glory of God alone. Titus chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. Titus chapter 3, from verse 4 to 5. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, he saved us. John 6, 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and we raise him up on the last day. Give God the glory. He does it. You never receive anything if it's not given by God. Whatever you have become is by the glory of God. It's a privilege. It's by his mercy and grace. Whatever you become is by the grace of God. The life that we are living now is by the grace of God. The children that you have is by the grace of God. If, don't look at yourself as if you are better than somebody. Don't look down on somebody and think that you, do, you, you are better off. It's all by the grace of God. Amen? It's all by the grace of God. You can be the worst. You, I mean, things can be other way. But by his grace, he has made you who you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. So, whether you eat or drink, or wh whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen? So, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Father, we thank you today. We bless you because we are so wonderful. Thank you because... All is by grace alone. It's by you alone. It's by faith alone. Anything outside your word is garbage. And all to your glory alone. Open our eyes, O oh God, to understand more and more our purpose in this life. Help us, help us to embrace you. Help us, O oh God, to continue to pursue you. Not you only pursuing us. Help us to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all that you have given us. Help us to continue to live our life to the glory of your name. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that all that we will lay our hands on here, take glory in it. 
that our service will be acceptable unto you. Thank you, precious Father. You are, your love for us is great. And our love for you matters most. Because eyes have not seen. Neither can anybody, nobody has, that has ever had it. Nobody has ever imagined what you have prepared for those that love you. Help us to love you more and more. Blessed be your name. If there's anyone here who has not given his or her life to you, Father, we pray that if that person's soul will not have rest until you submit your life to God so that at the end you will rejoice. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for this, for this great Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We are going to go very